two cameras, one green screen. Panasonic GH4, Blackmagic Cinema Camera. But which one of these two is going to be the best when it comes to chroma key work? Now, if you know anything about chroma key or green screen work, you'll know that once you've got your green screen sorted out, the next thing is your camera. We've got the compressed version output 4K GH4, which we call H264 at chroma subsampling 420. Not normally the best sort of combination for doing green screen work. And then we've got the Blackmagic Cinema camera, 2.5K Cinema DNG RAW, no compression, no artifacting, no subsampling, or ProRes 422 subsampling, but still no compression. So a lower resolution, but no compression camera, and a higher resolution, compressed camera. Now to help me I have my erstwhile assistant who as we can see is having a really bad hair day at the moment. But seriously hair is one of the more difficult things to actually do a good chroma key on and either if you get a bad background badly lit or your camera cannot handle the actual quality of what the actual image is then you can end up with losing a lot of detail in the actual chroma keyed output. So what we'll do is we'll actually film this on a rotating stand so we'll have a full 360 degree view. We'll do it in 4K compressed from a GH4 and we'll do it in 2.5K Cinema DNG RAW and also ProRes 422 in 1920x1080 from the Blackmagic Cinema camera. We'll put this into After Effects and we'll see what the differences are between the two cameras and effectively the three types of formats. Okay, we're now in After Effects and we've got our three pieces of footage. We've got the ProRes, the RAW and the uh, 4K from the GH4 in respective comps here. And as we can see, we've got this equivalent to probably a sort of a mid-body or long-body shot here. If this was up here, the head would be a bit further up. But this is a sort of uh, distance we're sort of working at for a normal sort of person to be green screened onto a background. First thing we need to do is to mask off this background here. And we'll do that by cropping off using the pen tool, a mask area, so we can just work on this and uh, we'll get rid of that background at the moment. Now then, all we need to do now is to pick our background in key light. Here we are. And we'll just click on that. And there we are. Straight away, we've got a pretty good key and we haven't really done anything yet. What we need to do is actually sort of refine this a bit now. And we'll look at this with the screen mat and see what we've actually got and we can see that it's not totally black and white it should be completely white here and completely black around the edge here so what we need to do is to tweak this although we actually don't need to worry about anything outside of this box so we don't need to worry about this we're only looking about what's going on in here so if we clip this back and we only need to push it back so it's black here we're about 13 at the moment. And in fact, if we go to status, it will give us an enhanced version of this. So we can actually see it a little bit better. We'll push that out so it's completely black here. And now we want to make this completely white. And then the gray bit is going to be the transparent, semi-transparent area around the edges of the hair. So we'll pull this in. This is clipping white. If we don't do this, the face will become semi-transparent and you'll see things partially showing through it. So we can pull this back to about, about there. The thing is, obviously, the more we pull this back, the more this pushes it out. And I'll show you in a minute what it happens. Now, if we combine the result and we go back to here, and that looks quite good. Now, if we put it on a white background, we can see. Now, if we turn this on and off, we can see where we're losing our detail. In fact, the hair looks thicker, if anything, on the keyed out version than it does the original. And that is down to this. If you watch this, if I look at this, this is affecting the, the white clip, which is, you can see she's actually getting lighter here. It's getting lighter because we're allowing more transparency through. And obviously we need this to block that out. And the more we block this back, the thicker the hair becomes. And this is where it starts to sort of not look quite so realistic when you've got this thin hair here and you're losing the detail. But that's just something you've just got to put up with, really. And we're going to be around about there. And that's what we were looking at on our status. Something about, about there. If we go any further back this way, we're going to start getting the transparent face again. So we're back to that. And that's come out quite well. That's on ProRes. So now we'll do the same on 
the raw. Again, we'll mask this off there, 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 and there. Turn off the background, pick our color, zap. There we go. And actually, we've got a bit of a frizz. It looks a bit highlighted around the edge. And if we look carefully, it looks a bit sort of a bit odd looking there. And that is really down to this pre-multiplied output. And what it's doing is where the semi-transparent part is now, it's multiplying the color of the or the brightness of the pixels right on the edge with the alpha. So they are now darker as the alpha gets more transparent. If that is left on by default, they are left at full brightness. And that it adds this sort of highlighted edge on things, which you might want, you might not want. I tell you, I find that if I'm going to put this on this background and when it's actually turning, it'll look more distracting than if it's taken off. It looks a bit better there with that detail. And as you can see, that's looking quite good. In fact, on here, I've also got a simple choker. And what that's doing is you'll see it's pulling it in slightly more as well so it's getting rid of some of that little frizzy effect it can start to look a bit sort of sizzly uh, as the thing's turning around and you don't see it until you're actually looking at it in motion um and you can't really see it here but it you get this sizzling effect right on the edges there so to reduce that i've got a simple choker and i'm pulling it in just over half a pixel now that's actually looking quite good on that one and on the white now that's raw. Now obviously we've got more re more detail here because this is 2400 pixels. And so we've got more pixels to build this up and see the actual hair. Now if we come on to the 4K version, we'll see that we've got more detail still. And even with the, the compressed output, we're not losing really sort of a lot of detail. If we pull in here and look at this edge, I mean we're looking at individual hairs now. And bear in mind, we are still pulled out to here. So she's only making up a small area of the screen, but we can pull in to literally see individual hairs. So let's see how this is going to key out. So again, we'll mask this area off. There. there. Oop, pull that down a little bit. There and there. Apply the background color, maybe a little bit of light on there, so we'll take that off the edge there. Now we'll look at our screen mat. Yes, again, we need to pull this in, make that the blacks blacker, and we need to make the whites as white as possible. Quick look at the status, how's that looking? Yeah, pull that black in a little bit more. There we are. And there we are with our, and you see instantly we've got more detail in the actual hair and you can see the highlighting on this artificial hair as well. It's showing up quite well. So now if we put it on the background, again, we've got quite a good there. It look, it's looking nice near the edge there. It looks a little bit sort of artificial at the edges there, but it's not too bad. And have we got a choker on here? Yeah, we've got a choker on here, which is pulling it in very slightly. You can see that difference there. You can just see it sort of appearing in and out as I'm pulling it in by half a pixel. And that's all it needs to do to make that. So now we've got that. We've got it on white. Again, we can see that. And that's come out quite good. So let's now render these off into some different comps and uh, we'll put them in into Premiere and then we can see the things running in real time and compare the three all together. So we've rendered off each one of our respective comps into an individual file. And there are three, three files here. We've got the ProRes HD, which is on the left, which is at 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution. Then the Cinema DNG RAW version, uh, which was 2.5K or 2.4K uh, in the center. And then we've got the GH4 4K, which is the fully compressed version, which is H.264 output and Chroma subsampling of 420. So this is actually the worst sort of compression version and these the one in the center would be the best because there is no compression at all and obviously then there's just the subsampling on the ProRes HD but actually if we look at this instantly or straight away we can see that 
the ProRes has actually come out really rather well, actually. There's some nice detailing in the hair here and around the edge. It's not quite as detailed in the face and in the hair as it is in then obviously the 2.5K. But when we look at the 4K, you can see there is a lot more detail in the face. The eyes look clearer, the mouth. And then you've got the hairs here. And if we actually move this around, which we can do here, if we look at this uh, sort of curl of hair here this one um, and you watch as it turns and then look at the same in the other one here this is the center it doesn't sort of shine as much and then obviously the pro res again it looks quite sort of dull in comparison this one has definitely a more of a shine to it and it sort of with the rest of the hair it picks up these little shining details more now this is because we we've got more pixels at work in here obviously these are all scaled down from their respective sizes to full hd but obviously the source material was higher resolution so the end results are going to look slightly better even if they are still the same resolution so we can see that the pro res is the lowest sort of resolution of all of them but it's actually got still quite a good edge detail and this is the edge deal which we, detail which we're really sort of interested in when we're doing chroma key so that's done very well there the cinema dng raw again has done it but i know it's on this if we sort of run it and let it go it does have a sort of sizzly effect around the edge which i was talking about before as you can see there it's it's I think where we the, um, it's keying and then losing the key in and out and in and out slightly. So it gives this sort of sizzling effect as if it's there and then not there and there and not there. And then on the actual 4K around the edge, it's a really rather smooth finish. There isn't really a lot of sizzling going on. It's nice and sort of semi-transparent around the edge it's not quite as defined or definite as the um, ProRes version but the very fine details here have got a little bit sort of mushy in there and I don't know if that's the actual compression working on the very fine detail but we are scaled down here and I say we've got choker uh, on the actual alpha here which pulls in the alpha all the way around and sort of takes off some of this fine detail on all of them so we could have actually sort of brought that out and left it in there but i think then we end up with this more of this sizzling effect and you get in the very fine edges uh, as we do with here so i think probably it's best to sort of pull this in a little bit if you don't know what the original would look like you'd say yes they look very good because we know what the originals look like you can say yes well i can see where it's been pulled in a little bit and it's not quite as it should be there but so if we now look at it on a different background and we look at this as a, a studio background now because you've got this darker background it looks sort of very well integrated into this background so i would say that we've got a pretty good key on all of these and really then it's down to the detail that we're carrying over in the actual image itself and really the 4k does show this up as be as the best so really we've got the lowest sort of in theory quality image but because it's the highest resolution is giving us the best image here in the 4k it's also the smallest file size so really i think we can say that the winner of this as far as overall usability and the quality of the look goes is really the 4k so the cinema dng and the pro res which both come from a black magic camera are almost redundant now compared to what we've got coming out of a 4k this is exceedingly good and also the color grading if you look at the color grading on this it's pretty damn good as well it's very nice here. and don't forget this is actually half its size so this could be scaled up to a hundred percent and it'll be twice as big as this and you've still got all the detail in here we can scale this one up by 20 percent, and this one if we scale up any more we'll start losing detail so the conclusion I can draw from this is that the Panasonic GH4 4K standard output will make a very good consumer grade camera for chroma key or green screen work. The compressed higher resolution output of this camera trumps the uncompressed lower resolution of the Blackmagic cameras and with the added benefit of the much smaller file sizes that will have a bigger impact on your computer and your long term storage. The only reason I can see for using the Blackmagic RAW output is if you're going to be doing a lot of colour grading. There is also the option of a Blackmagic 4K camera, but they're still having issues with this particular model.
The Panasonic GH4 has a lot more usability options and you can also get a ProRes 422 output from it if you use a separate recorder. But as we've seen, the standard 4K compressed output will do a very good job for most situations. I hope that you found this video useful and if you did then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our video alchemy channel and share it with someone who you think might benefit from it. Don't forget to hop on over to video-alchemy.com and join our newsletter too. My name's Paul Shilito and this has been the Video Alchemy production, so until the next time, bye!